Okay, very well. Hi, everyone. My name is Quincy, and I am the owner of a quick list, uh, or this way, a quick list uh, service. I, uh, I'm an Amazon seller, and since 2014, uh, and then I developed the, the lit list service, um, and then also introduced the new uh, OA sourcing software. Now I just uh, launched my uh, new 2024 uh, offering uh, on my website, quicklist.com. But today um, I have a very special guest uh, with us and his name is Will Abram because he offer a very unique service, especially for OA seller like myself who have a lot of SKU, different SKU, right? I'm not doing wholesales. I'm not doing private label. But there's one unique uh, situation as an OA seller we will face. That means about the inventory, what to do with the inventory that cannot be sold or no longer be can no longer be sold as new on Amazon. How do I recoup the capital from those inventories? So, um, so that would be enough of me. And Will, would you like to? have a brief introduction of yourself. Of course. Yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, I guess a, a brief introduction for me. I'm, I've been an Amazon seller for the past couple of years. I started selling on Amazon uh, during the pandemic. It was just kind of a way to make extra income on the side. And I found I actually really liked doing it and was able to make a lot more money than I expected. And so that turned into a full-time thing for me. And then uh, somewhere at the beginning of 2022, I want to say, uh, we started this other business. We found that, you know, returns and removals just became, for me personally, as a former seller, it became a real issue. You know, I was living in a one bedroom apartment and I was in college and working full time. And there was just all these returns showing up at my house and I had nothing to do with them, uh, nothing in place to deal with them. So, um, it, you know, I have an aunt who used to sell on Amazon, um, and she had asked me at the time to handle her returns. She said, Hey, can you get my stuff? And, you know, what I can send back into Amazon, can you send it back for me? And then what can't, can you list it on eBay? Uh, and so we started doing that for her. And then she told a friend about it who told another friend who sent it in the group chat. And, you know, all of a sudden we found that this was a, a service that people were really interested in. So uh, that's what I've been doing. I'm, I've been in kind of the Amazon space for a couple of years now, and and I just I love it. I love the community, and and uh, yeah, I'm just really happy to be here. Yeah, thank you, thank you for sure uh, sharing. Um, you know your your own journey and uh, how to get to uh create the uh, Oxium uh, <laughs> uh prep uh, uh for uh, Amazon sellers. So I get to know um your business partner JD at mm -hmm. um at a conference. And I really like talking to him. I like, uh, he seems like, uh, like a great guy. And at that time, actually, I just discontinued a um, return management service that I was experimenting with. And at, I so it's the perfect time I met JD and then got introduced to the Oxium, perhaps the return management service, right? Since then, I became a client. So today I speak, on behalf of you know a um a business owner and also a active client of your service, so I can chime in along the way as we explain to our viewer that the uh, um uh what the service is about, why it's beneficial, and why actually it's a wise investment uh, in two thousand twenty four. If you are in the OA space, especially if you're selling a lot of shoes, right? And so this group, and I hope that the main audience will be people selling shoes to various capacity from uh, 3,000 pair of shoes a month to, you know, uh, 100 pair a month, right? Because there's a very specific reason why shoes can really, um, uh, uh, is, uh, is something that you can uh, get a lot of money back um, off. Mm -hmm. right? So, okay. So, well, before we dive in, um, mm -hmm. tell us a, one thing that about yourself that not too many people, your friends or, uh, uh, the client you work with know about you. That's a great question. Um, one thing about me that people don't know about, uh, I guess a, an interesting tidbit, I'm, I'm an expat. 
Um, I used to live in China and Hong Kong when I was a kid uh, for my dad's work. So that's definitely been an interesting part of my story. I remember coming back from China around seven or eight years old. And I'm not sure if I, you might know this, but uh, Hong Kong used to be a British controlled, I don't know if you call it a, a, a country, whatever it was at the time. And so some of the lingo, some of the English lingo was slightly British. So I came back from China calling trash bins, rubbish bins. Uh, there were all these cultural differences. Like I, I didn't know what Dairy Queen was and everyone at school knew what Dairy Queen was. And so it was an interesting adjustment, but I, I would say that's probably something that most folks don't know about me is I used to live in, in Hong Kong. Yes, I think that is, uh, I came from uh, mainland China, Canton. So I mm -hmm. went to Hong Kong on my way to the United States. And that was uh, way back then. Um, right now, I consider more American than <laughs> than Chinese. Uh -huh. So I think the uh, the, the unique experience of um, <clears throat> uh, of, of ourselves, right? So we, we, we put our knowledge together and then we're into the Amazon business. Mm. And it's important for us, the, the great people in the business connect together and they will be able to share resources and knowledge and then provide um, services that are relevant to um, the Amazon seller community. So that's what we do today. Um, so being an active user or a client of your, your service, I think the, uh, we have uh, quite a few things to talk about. But for somebody mm -hmm. who is brand new uh, to Oxium, when we look at the uh, the uh, uh, the name of your company, it's Oxium Prep. So it sounds like it's a prep center. Can you tell us yes. a little bit more about uh, your company? Yes. So uh, we we specialize in returns management for OA sellers. Is essentially what we do. So you know, I'll talk to, talk about that a little bit. I think as a former Amazon seller, um, I think one of the really amazing things about Amazon in twenty twenty four and and for the past however many years is, you know, you can completely operate your business and not touch any of your inventory. So you can you know, have someone else manufacture those products, you know, it gets shipped to your prep center and then it gets shipped into an Amazon FBA center. And when you get orders, it gets shipped out to your customers. So all of that is happening without you touching any of those products. And that's an amazing thing, but it can become sort of a bottleneck when you're getting returns and removals because, you know, if you don't have any physical infrastructure to deal with that, it's it's going to be a huge problem and, and you're going to have boxes and boxes stacking up in your prep center or in your home or whatever the case may be. And so I think there's a lot of need for that. And, and that's what we are. We're a, a revenue recovery service for Amazon sellers. Um, and I, I can talk more about that specifically as we go along, but that's the majority of what we do. And, and additionally, we, we do some standard FBA prep as well. And I, I think a lot of folks in this group are OA sellers. So that's not something we, uh, I'm sure as you know, being in a sales tax-free state is important when you're doing OA. Uh, you know, it can save you up to eight and a half percent, you know, of, of whatever your buy cost is. So frankly, if you're an OA seller, I would recommend going to a prep center in a sales tax-free state. It's kind of a no-brainer. Um, but we do do some some wholesale prep as well for some of our clients. But again, that returns management service is, is our, our main focus. That's awesome. So I was just wondering at the beginning, right? Um, you are based off uh, Atlanta. So mm -hmm. um, it's not sales tax-free uh, yep. state. So I have a prep center up in Oregon, which is a sales tax-free uh, state. So I was kind of a first question that popped up. I mean, how mm -hmm. did you... Uh, why would people consider using a, 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 a prep center, Agreed. right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But you, you said it, wow. I mean, for people doing wholesale, I mean, of course you get the tax exam, right? This is no yeah. problem. And mm -hmm. be able to prep and handle the return uh, item it, under one roof, it's ideal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that it actually, it, it, it's a great example um, of, of your business. That's why right, right now for OA seller, now, the return management becomes a focus. So you recently um, have some expansion. Can you talk yes. about that too? We did. We did have some expansion. We're, we're just finished moving up into a, a bigger space. We went from uh, Cumming, Georgia to Alpharetta, Georgia. I'm sure if you're not from around there, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But 
but yeah, I mean, in the last year and a half, uh, I think our business has just kind of exploded. I mean, we, um, you know, we're serving, we're serving a lot of folks in, in a lot of different countries. And I, I just think we found there's a, a real need for what we offer. So yeah, the move into the bigger space is so we can take on more clients and help try to save some people more money. So that is awesome. That's why we talk have a talk today for our uh, viewer. So the reason as a active Amazon seller myself um, in the OA space, we are looking at the entire selling cycle, right? One of them is sustaining. A part of the being in the sustaining uh, um, responsibility as a seller is to manage uh, the unfulfillable, any kind of a return, stranded inventory that I do not want to touch. I do not want them to be sent back to my garage, right? And right. I want to recoup as much as I can, if I cannot, if those inventory cannot no longer be sold as a new on Amazon. And, but that all takes time. Even mm -hmm. receiving from the carrier is still right. a time spent to check right. and everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Axiom seems to be a hands-off, pretty much hands-off operation, mm -hmm. which is ideal for people like me because Everybody's time is limited. So I reduce um, my time spent on Amazon as a seller to four hours a day. And then the rest of the hours of the day will be spending on, you know, exploring new opportunity and working on software and things like that. So it becomes essentially a necessity for me to be able to recoup as much uh, capital as possible on the or mostly the shoe unfulfillables inventory, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I lie about Oxium. So if my experience is that, so in order to save me time, I create a weekly removal, mm -hmm. <laughs> removal okay. order directly sent over to, to your uh, location because I always have a return on shoes, <laughs> clothing, right? right? Some uh, Right now, I think last time I checked 70, percent of my inventory the unfulfillable I mean are uh, in those categories yes. and yes. so for 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 the audience we were, we're selling a lot of shoes mm -hmm. so do you accept all uh, inventory of all categories or you have a very specific category in mind that would make sense to, to use your service yeah that's a great question and I, and I think you know, if, if I can just give kind of an overview of specifically what our service is, I think that'll kind of dovetail into what categories we do best in and what categories we don't. Um, you know, so like you mentioned with creating removal orders, um, you know, we become our clients return a removal address. So we get their returns and removals. Um, these items are pictured, processed, inspected, um, and, and our clients get a login into our portal. They can see all that info. So they see a product description, they see a picture, they see a five or six pictures, professionally taken pictures, and they see a packing slip, they see all that good stuff. So what they can do is they can tell us whether to sell that item on Amazon or to sell it on eBay. So if they choose, say, I want this sent back into Amazon, they can provide an ASIN and we will ship that product back into Amazon for them. That's obviously most folks' number one choice. You're going to get you the, the most amount of money back on Amazon for any product, really. So that's option number one. And then option number two is they can elect to sell that product on eBay. Uh, they can even set a listing price if they would like. And uh, our listing team will take those professionally taken photographs and create eBay listings on uh, that client's eBay account. So... Uh, that's kind of an overview of the process. And, and then additionally, uh, we'll file reimbursements on our client's behalf throughout that process. So I'll just give two examples. Uh, one of the main, main reimbursements that we file for our clients is uh, on switcheroos. So as I'm sure you know, let's say you, know, you sold a brand new pair of Hoka's and someone bought it and then switched it out for a pair of old flip-flops and then sent it right back in. Uh, unfortunately, it's something we see a lot of. And uh, Amazon is supposed to give you a reimbursement for that on the front end, but a lot of times they don't, and they miss it. And those are reimbursements that we will file. And then uh, additionally, we file reimbursements on uh, damages that happen during the removal process. So, 
you know, I think as a good example, I know this is a shoe selling group, but uh, Lancome was just recently gated for all sellers. No one can sell them anymore. So, you know, a lot of our clients had thousands of Lancome products coming out of Amazon FBA centers, and these were coming out in sellable condition, a new condition. Uh, but by the time they arrived to our warehouse, you know, the UPS guy threw it in the back of the truck and then it got stepped on and whatever the, you know, whatever the case may be. By the time it got to us, you know, the boxes are blemished and maybe the product spilled, whatever the case may be. Now, those are reimbursements that we file uh, on behalf of our clients. And a lot of people see that as free money because, you know, frankly, it's a reimbursement that I don't think a lot of sellers are necessarily aware of and one that we file successfully. So that's, I think, essentially an overview of our process. And then, yeah, kind of moving into what categories we do best in, uh, I think, you know, shoes are probably our best category, to be quite frank. And, uh, you know, people do the best with our service on shoes. Um, I think as an example, you know, grocery is a good category, you know, a good example of something we don't do super well in. Um, you know, if something is selling brand new on Amazon for 10 or $15, and it's coming back as, you know, an, unse an unsellable condition, then it probably isn't worth coming to us. And it probably isn't worth coming to anyone for that matter. Um, you're probably best off liquidating that if, if it's eligible or just having Amazon dispose of it. Um, and so I think that's a good example. Um, not everything is worth coming to us and not everything is worth being dealt with, period. Um, however, shoes is a category that we do very well in uh, that tends to be higher priced items. And then additionally, uh, you know, pre-owned shoes is something that folks are a lot more comfortable with purchasing on eBay. Uh, shoes are something that we do very well in. Whereas, you know, if you're selling grocery, not many people are buying, you know, used food items. <laughs> Frankly, no one is buying that, uh, at least on eBay. So it is important to uh, really just pick and choose what comes to us to decide, uh, you know, what inventory items you think are worth uh, trying to send back to Amazon or, or selling on eBay. Yeah, recently, in addition to Lancome, Coach is another yes. brand. Amazon would not no longer allow <laughs> seller. So a lot of people yeah. actually are looking to sell them on eBay, right? So mm -hmm. have you received coaches that uh, tons that of coach? Yes, we have received tons of coach, um, and that's something that's done very well on eBay. I think, as you can imagine, um, and then additionally, those reimbursements. Obviously, those are high priced items, so those those are high reimbursements. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of things like that. I, I don't know if. I think I'm, this is okay for me to say, but Clinique is a one, another one that very recently I got kind of very, blacklisted. Yes. Yes. And so you know, we've had people send us a lot of Clinique and, and that's something that we also, you know, we see our clients do very well. And it, it's not just the unfulfillables, it's also the stranded, you know, let's say you got an IP claim on a product or you got retroactively gated or you know, there was a, a listing, a listing issue, or it was mislabeled by your prep center. Could be a bunch of different reasons, but yeah, you know, for whatever reason, it's not able to be sold on Amazon anymore. Those are products that still have a ton of value. You know, just because it can't be sold on Amazon doesn't mean it's worthless. So those are products that can come to us and you know you can recoup all most, if not all, of your buy costs. So I think that's something that you know people are able to just source with a little bit more freedom, knowing that they have kind of a backup plan if, if things can no longer be sold on Amazon. So as a uh, um, uh, with the business model uh, that I have, um, I have uh, mostly unfulfillable uh, shoes. So mm -hmm. based on what you just said, that the um, I try to because every day I will look at the unfulfillables, right? I have like all, always have something in the unfulfillables. So I check it every day. It's very quick. I will take a look at it to see, for example, if I have it, there's a, a pair of shoes at size. Uh, a 10, which is my size, I say, mm -hmm. hey, do I, can I keep them for my <laughs> Right. that, I would just look through for anything like a little uh, screw, a screwdriver or mm -hmm. a little nuts, a boat or something. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to get rid of it. I just, you know, go ahead and dispose or liquidate, Agreed. whatever. Agreed. So it yep. will not be shipped over to you, which it will mm -hmm. cost a inspection fee, right? Yep. So I find it to be very minimal amount of effort I need to put in, which is, I think, to, as like what you said, you take a look at the inventory, you, you um sending over 
uh, will be sent uh, uh, sent over to Oxim, mm -hmm. making sure you just only the high price uh, uh, item will make sense to go, right? Now, talk right. about high price. Do you, what about electronics like uh, that usually come in a, a higher price? Mm -hmm. Do you test them? We can, absolutely. Uh, okay. Testing isn't something that we do on the front end for all of our products. Uh, that can be because something could end up in the trash bin. There's no, you know, a client can decide, I don't want to sell this anywhere. So there's no sense really testing on the front end. But absolutely, that's something that our clients can request. You know, of course, if it's an $800 electronic, you want it to be tested. And, and that's something that we can do for, for an extra cost. Well, you know, we, we've had people send us a console so that, you know, we can test games on it. It's, it's kind of fun, you know, some of the reverse logistics stuff <laughs> that, that ends up happening, but, but absolutely testing is something that we can do. Wow. That's pretty awesome. I think the, um, so in addition to the, um, the item coming out of stranded inventory, I mean, directly from Amazon, right. Without going through, uh, uh, my house or going through, um, my original prep center because not every prep center will handle the return, mm -hmm. right? So, so essentially, for people, if they have a uh, you know item in the garage mm -hmm. and they pack them, pack them up and ship it over to you. Yes, they they absolutely can. Uh, we've had people clear out their whole basements and send it to us. Uh, we've had people drive down to our our warehouse with U hauls full of stuff. That's that's absolutely something we can accommodate. And frankly, most of the sellers that we talk to have some amount of accumulated inventory at their house, at their prep center, wherever, wherever it is. So that's, that's absolutely something we can, we can work with. Now with you, the way it works, <clears throat> right? So you receive inventory regardless where they're coming from, because you know, you're going to take picture and then uh, list them on eBay and so if that is the process, then I can send you, let's say, if I'm gated, I'm not able to sell on Amazon on certain item. Can I just say purchase online and then uh, ship it to you? And, and then you just list on eBay, just like I'm multi-channel to sell on eBay. Can yes. you do that? <clears throat> Absolutely. That's, that's okay. something that, that we can do and that we have done for some of our clients. Um, and and frankly, there can be price reductions in some of those, on some of those situations. If you know you're sending us a, a bunch of inventory, and let's say it's all in new condition, you can use stock images if you'd like, uh, and avoid some of the fees of taking professional pictures, things of that nature. So that's absolutely something that we can do, and, and something that we've seen some of our clients do successfully. Yeah. So for example, um, Under Armour shoe. I mean. I can sell the, uh, the apparel, but most of the time the Under Armour shoes are gated. I cannot mm -hmm. uh, Amazon. So in that case, I can buy it, you know, at a great discount. And then I just send over to, to you. And then we just, I just sell on eBay. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so you set the price and, uh, for item listing on, on eBay. I mean, mm -hmm. how did you set, of, uh, set the price? Uh, set the, a price? Yeah. It's a, a great question. Uh, and, and first of all, I think as we had talked about, our clients have the ability to set a listing price. So when they send it to, to eBay, they can choose to sell it for $300 or $3, whatever, whatever they would like. They have complete freedom to do that. And then if they elect to not select a listing price, we will set that listing price. And the first place that we look is uh, sold, you know, the, the sold tab on eBay. Uh, we'll, we'll look at what that product has sold for in the last 90 days to, to gauge a good listing price. And then we will also look for uh, similar listings to that product. And you know, we're, we're trying to get your inventory sold quickly. People just want to reco recover as much money as possible. So we'll always try to come in a little bit lower than you know what, what the lowest listing price is for on eBay. So that is how we come up with our, our listing prices on eBay. And that is actually the same process that me, if I were the one doing everything myself and setting the mm -hmm. price, right? So that is great. So what I what happened to me is once you your team set up the listing, already created it and set the price, I would just bring up uh, uh, my eBay um, you know, uh, apps on my phone. I would just mm -hmm. keep looking for, can I send 
a new offer to whoever's interested. And then yeah. if I see that, I will send an offer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and it's been working really nicely because mm -hmm. I look at it uh, every day. I mean, multiple times a day. And mm -hmm. then that's just simple. And that's, but I need to do it, right? Because you you set the initial price. It does not mean that people were willing to pay on eBay. Mm -hmm. right. I need to make that decision because I, so how long, the, can the inventory be kept at your place without additional cost? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, yeah, it's important to say on the front end, when you pay our fees, you get 90 days of storage with that. So that's part of what you're paying for is 90 days to sell your product on eBay. And as you had mentioned, sending offers, of course, but also repricing is an important part of that. And it, it doesn't have to be very, you know, long and jury. It, it doesn't have to be a very long process, you know, eBay's come a long way. You can bulk reprice your items, do things of that nature, but that's an important part of it. Uh, you know, it's it's impossible to know. It's not quite like Amazon where you have Keepa and you can see, you know, three years of detailed data on a product. You're just, you're not going to know. And so repricing is important. And then additionally, uh, when that 90 days comes up, I, I think it's important for folks to change their listings to auctions if, if they would like. You know, you, you set a minimum price that'll cover your shipping label and any eBay fees. And then if you net a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, whatever the, whatever it is from that product, it's it's better than nothing. So those are some of the ways that you can ensure that your products are getting sold. Yeah, I think um because if I keep consistently sending over inventory unfulfillable to you, over time you will kind of uh, um lose track of what has been sent over. So mm -hmm. what's available uh, on eBay. So the way I, because I'm checking it every day, so I kind of uh, constantly uh, be exposed to what kind of an act, uh, item uh, active on eBay. So mm -hmm. doing that, that means allow me to be able to keep that 90 day storage, um, you know, in mind because I want them, I want to recruit the uh, capital as soon as right. possible anyway. Right, so um, I would drop the price, and eBay makes it so e uh, so easier, uh, so much easier. And then I think that's something, uh, that a, as a seller, uh, we need to do. Right, mm -hmm. I cannot. Say, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> I give up everything to you, so mm -hmm. we have some say in it. However, after ninety day, as you suggest, and even try the auction, the auction mm -hmm. uh, 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 method in is still not being sold. Um, what kind of expectations should a client have? Yeah, so, and, and I guess just to comment on the last thing you had said previously when you were talking about eBay, before answering that question, I think um, developing a strong eBay account is is an asset. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that's something that we've heard a lot from our clients is that they're glad that we don't have some big eBay account that we're selling their products on. Number one, because the inventory stays theirs throughout the whole process. There's no payouts. There's nothing like that. It's your account. It's your product. Um but you know, as you continue to use our service and make more sales, your eBay velocity, your eBay store will will increase, and and that's something that I think our clients really like. Um, but in terms of after that ninety days, uh, you can really there's a couple options. You can uh, pay to have more storage uh, if you think, ah, oh, shoot, you know, I, I didn't reprice it as aggressively as I needed to, and if you just give me thirty more days, I'll I'll get it sold and recoup my money. Um, it can be donated if you'd like or disposed of. So, you know, we don't do a ton of that. I mean, it, auctions are something that I don't know if you've ever uh, looked something up on eBay and then toggled to see what ends soonest, but people are always hunting for a deal. So uh, auctions are something that's very successful if you haven't been able to sell it by now. So, yeah, that, that's usually the process at the end of 90 days. So there's still an option if the client want the item shipped back to them you can do yes. that. Yes, that's also an option. Yeah, and we've even had people, uh, especially with some of the coach that's been coming back, say, you know, ooh, I want that handbag. And we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll pack it up <laughs> and ship it to you. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you add, basically cover all the options that what, what seller wants, right? The different way of uh, handling the, uh, the inventory. So it's like the key thing would be you manage all of that for the sellers. Right, so we just see um, in the sense that we need to um, uh, communicate well with your team. So uh, uh, how how would the communications uh, uh, happen? Yeah, so I, you know you'll get an introduction. I guess first of all, 
I think I can, uh, I think I can uh, brag about this because it's not necessarily my area of the business that I handle. Um, but I would say our, our customer service is second to none. Um, and very, very responsive, very quick, very helpful. Um, but throughout your onboarding process, you will meet uh, my business partner, JD. And uh, in terms of communicating with our team, JD is that point of contact. It's it's sending them an email most of the time. And then there's also uh, the ability to create a support ticket on our website. And again, I would say our, our customer service is, is more than adequate. So, you know, if you have an eBay question, a question about Amazon, whatever the case may be, that that's something you could email or create a support ticket about. Yeah, so I personally experienced the um, the efficiency of the communications um, uh, that um, the your service set up. I talked to, I, I emailed JD and I created a ticket. I did both. And, mm -hmm. and if I created it or send an email today, tomorrow I will get an answer. So I can attest to that. That is a great, I mean, customer service is, the, sure. is, is something, you know, first of all, um, it's kind of almost hands off. I, it doesn't come to my my, my garage, and mm -hmm. you have uh, you you re, re, very responsive, right? So because it's always something unexpected happen, right? Mm -hmm. So I can I ask you about a price and where where was where uh, a specific item uh, uh, is in your in your warehouse, and you know mm -hmm. all kinds of questions. So I'm just kind of a just just the uh, um, uh, as a as a good customer. That I would do my part to be, uh, you know, to communicate my needs, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah, it's important. There's a cost associated with the the service, mm -hmm. obviously, right? So that the key thing is, um, my objective is to, I don't touch my inventory, I get as much, um, money back as possible, but I realize I need to pay a fee for the service. So making right. sure I get back is more than enough to pay for the fees. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's important. So um, absolutely. Can you talk about the fees that you of uh, course. Touch? Yeah, and I, I think it's important to be kind of upfront about all that because that's an important part of the process. Is is right. this item that I'm going to send to Axiom worth their fees? Uh, that's you know, we want our clients to make money on our service. That's just the bottom line. Um, so there's an inspection fee, initially an inspection fee on, on whatever products are coming to our warehouse. And then there's a per unit fee to send it to Amazon and then a per unit fee to have it uh, listed, fulfilled and stored for 90 days on eBay. So, you know, that specific pricing, especially with the eBay is gonna be different based on the size of the product. So, but again, all that's a per unit, a, a per unit charge and, and we can provide our clients with a, a detailed price sheet so that they can make informed decisions on what's coming to our, our warehouse. Great. So I'm we're, we're talking about shoes, right? So and typically mm -hmm. I send you a pair of shoes. Can you kind of quickly walk through what kind of fee I should expect for shoe? So for shoes, it's gonna obviously be that inspection fee. And then I think for most shoes it's gonna be three seventy five. Uh okay. And again, it depends on the shoes. If you're selling a if you're sending us a, a baby shoe, you know, a, a kid's size one Y, it's it's not gonna cost you the same as a size eleven men's shoe. Um, okay. but for a shoe, you can ex expect to pay between five and $6 would, would be an average for me at, an average that I would say. And so again, for things that are selling for $10 new on Amazon, that's not going to make sense. You're going to be losing money on that. But, you know, if you're selling a shoe for 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way up to, you know, $150, those fees are, are going to make sense. Okay. So because if we were selling shoes and we uh, as you said, five to six dollar, right? So in mm -hmm. addition, I need to pay the shipping um, to the uh, eBay customer. So right. the shipping mm -hmm. off and plus the uh, um, the uh, the service fee. Mm -hmm. So that is the total expense um, uh, using your service. Yes. And but you're not taking any cut in terms of the uh, the sales of, uh, of the item. Yes, that's correct. And, and I think that's something our clients really like, especially shoe clients that are selling higher price items. Like, I, even as you mentioned, electronics, you know, someone can sell a $1,300 item. Like, you know, we had a couple of these uh, $1,300 electronics sell this last week and that person was charged $5, just as if it was a $25 sale on a, you know, really used pair of shoes, whatever it was. So no commission is taken on any of those sales. And these sales are happening on your eBay account. So there's no having to worry about payouts and 
double checking numbers, none of that. And you get to grow your eBay store as well. So the way I see it, making sure I'm not losing money um, is that, for example, if I see that your team uh, received the item, uh, take the picture and then uh, list on eBay for, let's say, a shoes for $6, right? So I'm thinking about if I'm shipping, let's say, from uh, Atlanta to, um, that's to, to California, the eBay mm. customer California, right? Mm. We kind of a, a pair of shoes probably takes let's say around $10, right? I mean, or well, it depends on the exact location. So mm -hmm. let's assume $10, $10 plus $6, so it's 16, right? So mm -hmm. if I'm selling, I see the price setting on, selling on eBay to be, um, to be, um, well, of course, eBay, eBay fee, the charge is that too, right? So I need to, at certain selling price, it would make sense to, to have the item sold on eBay. Right, mm -hmm. so pay fee plus the uh, the service fee and plus the shipping, so they kind of come right. to a number. If I'm mm -hmm. not selling at that number minimum, then I'm actually losing money, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's so an important. Seller, we need to kind of keep that in mind, especially for people that Great. are relatively new or don't use eBay often. We need to make mm -hmm. sure, just like Amazon. When we sell on Amazon, we have all the fee. We make sure after all the mm -hmm. fee, they were profitable. But I want to mention something. Yes. There's a cost associate or a benefit associate with not having the item shipped back to me. I spend my time to inspect, receive, I mean, receive, inspect, and do something about it. Those are actually money associated with my time, mm -hmm. right? right? So even though I'm selling, I'm not making profit uh, using your service, selling on eBay, but I actually save money or save my time in handling all of them, right? right. So kind of a, something I want the our viewer, um, I remind myself, sometimes I use the service. I mean, um, that's what's going to happen. Now, at the end of the day, um, I need to see how much I ab I'm able to re recoup from using your right. service. Just mm -hmm. for a comparison, um, I've been in this space for a long time, since 2014. So I use multiple services to handling the unfulfillable or stranded inventory. So we will have a liquidation. We'll have, mm -hmm. uh, well, someone, some point at the service, they pay you up front based on mm -hmm. the current selling price. And then you you ship the uh, item to them, and then they were going to sell in the local storefront, right? So, and then I tried something else. I mean, eventually it didn't work out because at the end of the day, for, with auction or liquidation, I got penny back. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> yes, I don't have to handle my uh, my inventory, but I want to get a little bit more than just penny, right? So the, I think the best service I have been uh, 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 happened to use recoup about 30%. That is the, I was so happy. <laughs> I mean, never seen such a high uh, 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 rate of uh, re recouping my inventory. Mm -hmm. However, there's no difference for me to check out um, Oxim service, uh, mm -hmm. looking at the number, right? So I've been with the service for a while now. So I go back in the past three months, I pull all the numbers, and I'm happy to say, I mean, just for me, with all this, mainly shoes, right? Um, at least 50%. It's higher than any services I, I've used in the past. And then it's it kind of exceed my expectation. I'm happy if I'm, I don't do anything except repricing and minimal communication. Right. And then I'm able to recoup 50% of my shoe by cost. I am a happy customer, right? So that is something, um, why I like to bring you on and uh, introduce your service to people um, in my community because shoe seller, listen up. I mean, Will is the guy and uh, um, Oxim Prep is the uh, the service. They have a personal uh, testimonial, right? So I set up the system to be as efficient as possible as, you know, I don't have to put my hands on uh, <laughs> all the different places, right? And mm -hmm. A great communication, great customer service, and if they have a software, you can always gain visibility into what they have in their warehouses, 
and then you can communicate through a uh, opening ticket if you have a problem and then you can see the item at different stage um, how many items receive how many items already been taking picture how many items are ready to be launched to the eBay uh, uh, store and those are all well lined up in the dashboard and I really like it and they have the intention to continue to add more feature uh, mm -hmm. uh, into it and I also put me in kind of a control of how to sell stuff on eBay, right? Right. I think this is just, um, to me, it saved me time, recoup 50% of my buy cost. I am mm -hmm. happy. Now, my question for you in the future, in addition to eBay, do you guys have plan to sell on any other platform? Yeah, I mean, that's something we would love to do. And first of all, I, I really appreciate the testimony. Like that's that's just great to hear. That's why we do what we do. Um, you know, if the service wasn't really helping people, we would not do it. So that's that's great to hear. And yes, we would love to sell on other or other on other marketplaces. Uh, really, the only thing that's a bit of a bottleneck there is Amazon and eBay are the only two marketplaces that I am aware of uh, that allow user permissions. So. You know, if you want us to make listings on your eBay account, you don't have to give me your login uh, because if I had your login, I could see, you know, sensitive bank account information, things of that nature. I would also have to store that information, which you know, let's be honest with ourselves, our eBay passwords are also probably the passwords to our bank accounts and, and other things that they shouldn't be. So that's really not an option. And so, you know, I can't go on Etsy and create a listing on your account. Uh, but what you could do is create that listing yourself. You could you could take the pictures and you could list it on another marketplace and then tell us, hey, this item sold. Can you ship it to this address? And that's absolutely something we can accommodate. So it's not necessarily something that we can do, but it's something that absolutely some of our clients do. Uh, we have some clients that not only do they do OA, but they also have their own Shopify websites. So a lot of these products are cross-listed on their Shopify websites. So uh, if a sale's made on their website, they'll tell us, hey, this sold, and here's who you need to ship it to, and, and we'll get it shipped out. That sounds great. So the reason uh, in my, as a uh, business owner um, who having a um, quick list uh, service, so I just launched a brand new 2024 um, service offerings, which will include um, uh, uh, Oxygen service because through our partnership, I'm able to uh, give back to the um, 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 my member. If you are a, a member of a client of my service, you'll be able to receive a, a, a excellent discount by you know uh, taking your uh, your unfulfillable or any other inventory that you cannot sell on Amazon, and then Oxium will be able to help you. So I think uh, if you go over to quicklist.com you will be able to see under the pricing you will be see how we're going to pack a lot more value than just a single lit list so that you know uh we pack probably about 13 different um uh value uh perks i call into a simple list subscription so nobody else is out there is doing it i just want to give it back to to the community and if you've never seen it I think you will be able to see the service like, you know, great service like uh, what uh, Oxim is offering. So in the sense that the, the, the one difference is I'm active user of, of all the services that I offer, including Oxim, because so that I know the owner uh, well and, and JD, and then I understand how they operate. And then I, as an OA seller, I understand if it's beneficial to me then it will be beneficial to you as an OA seller, right? Because I've been staying in the trenches for so long. So I int only introduce the great people and great services or software. Okay, so to go take a look, go to uh, quicklist.com and then go under uh, pricing. You'll be able to see what we can do or will uh, the Oxim can do for you in terms of, turn of the sustaining part of your Amazon selling business. Okay, so... We're going to uh, wrap this uh, thing up. And Will, do you have do you have anything else you want to uh, share with our viewer? No, I, I don't think so. I, I just I, I think we really covered it, um, and I I really appreciate you having me on. This has been great, and yeah, we're we're excited to just get to help more sellers. Okay, so before I I, I let everybody go, if I'm a brand new, I want to uh, check out your service. Mm -hmm. So where do I how do I, I get in touch with you and find out more information? 
A great question. So you can go to axiomprepcenter.com backslash quick lists. And so you'll be prompted to fill out a contact form and, and you can get in contact with us and, and learn more about our service. And you know, as you had mentioned, there, there'll be some discount there because you're a, a client of, of quick list. So that's something we're really proud to offer and, and a partnership we're really proud of. So again, that's axiomprepcenter.com uh, backslash quick lists to get in contact with us. Yeah, if you need the link, it's on the uh, quicklist.com as well. You just click the Oxium uh, on the website, then you will be directed to uh, uh, to Oxium. You can check out all the different details, services, fees, and um, and and uh, how 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 the whole process uh, work. Whether it, it means something to you, right? If it's relevant to your business, I encourage you to give it a shot. And uh, um, let me see if I have any other question. Um, Okay. Yes, I almost forgot. Is the um, do you bill a client uh, on a monthly basis? We do. Yeah. So, uh, you get a, a once a month, pretty simple, uh, QuickBooks invoice, uh, and, and that'll be detailed with exactly why you're being charged, what you were charged, uh, how many products that we inspected, how many products we listed, and how many products were sent back in Amazon. Okay, perfect. So I think we cover everything. Then if you want to awesome. give it uh, Will's uh, Oxim service a, uh, a, a try, I'm be happy to. I think you would be um, happy uh, to, uh, to to have understand, no, you are not letting money on the, uh, let go of the money on the table because in this part of as a business owner, we want to make sure we get all the capital as much as possible back and we invest in our uh, Amazon business, right? If you have any question, you want to hear more about my personal experience with uh, Oxium, you're more than uh, free to, to contact me on Facebook and you know uh, where to find me. I'm more than happy to point you out, um, you know, what you should be looking for, especially when it comes to calculate the number in turn of whether it makes sense for you to use the, uh, the service. And uh, so I can help you uh, with that because I, Number is, the, is my thing, right? You have to look at the number and the numbers uh, don't lie. So we run our business based on number. Okay, everybody. I think uh, I really appreciate you, uh, Will, to be you may, willing to spend time with me. Yeah. And we'll be able Thank to share me. about your service, your journey. And then um, the great people connect uh, with each other. I hope our viewer will be able to understand the power of networking by working with the right people. And then to, together, we'll be able to build something bigger than, you know, individual can do, mm -hmm. right? So I hope that we'll be in touch soon. And uh, if you have any changes, any update on your service, then I will more than happy to bring you back again. And yeah. until next time, everybody. So we just have to say bye for now. I hope that today's, uh, you know, we, uh, information will be helpful to you and uh, in your selling on uh, Amazon. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone.